In today's video, how does a GeForce RTX 3050 6 gig compare to a Quadro RTX 1000 6 gig? Battle of GeForce versus Quadro. So our contestants for today. On the left, Lenovo IdeaPad Gaming 3. On the right, HP ZBook Power G10. So, these systems are the same but different. Let me explain. Let's go over the differences first. The IdeaPad Gaming, as you can see based on the stickers on the laptop itself, is an AMD system. We have onboard AMD graphics and a Ryzen 7000 CPU in the form of the Ryzen 7735HS, which is a Zen 3 based 8 core 16 thread CPU. Because we're going to focus on the graphics, I just want to have that for disclosure. This system also has 16 gigabytes of DDR5 4800 memory. This is all irrelevant for the GPU performance because that CPU is more than powerful enough with its 4.7 GHz boost clock to uh, handle the graphics card, which is an RTX 3050 Mobile 6 gig. The ZBook here on the right has a Raptor Lake Intel Core i7-13700H, which, which has 14 cores and 20 threads. It has a turbo clock of up to 5 GHz. Again, more than powerful enough. The GPU in this is the uh, Ampere RTX A1000 6 gigabit laptop GPU, and uh, it has pretty much the same specs as the RTX 3050 Mobile. I'll put it up on the screen where we can see that both of them have the full 2560 CUDA cores, they both have the same 6 gigabytes of RAM, they have GDDR6 of course, that's uh, what's modern these days. They have very similar pixel fill rates and overall performance levels and memory bandwidth, and they have a 96-bit memory bus. So what is interesting here is how do these two compare? The most limiting factor usually in laptop GPUs is the power limit, so that's what we will uh, take a look at later once we've run the benchmark so we can get a better idea. Overall, the RTX GeForce card has slightly higher clock speeds, so it should perform just a little bit better, assuming they both have the same power to, at their disposal. The ZBook Power is more or less focused on the CPU side of things, so I'm going to make a small assumption that it's going to be limited in power compared to the IdeaPad Gaming, which is focused on GPU performance. But uh, yeah, we're going to find out. Let's roll some benchmarks. The first benchmark is Unigine Superposition, which is a very nice synthetic benchmark for DirectX 11. We were running the 1080p medium preset here, and as we can see, the RTX 3050 scores 10,255 points, versus the RTX A1000's 9,056. There is more than 10% difference between these two cards, just from this benchmark alone. The next benchmark will be 3 d Mark Port Royal. 3 d Mark Port Royal is the ray tracing benchmark. Because we have RTX graphics cards, we have to test ray tracing performance. The RTX 3050 scores 3164 points, followed by the RTX A1000 scoring 2778. The next couple benchmarks will be gaming benchmarks, Cyberpunk 2077, Starfield and City Skylines 2, these games were selected because of their very high requirements, and uh, they should uh, really test these cards very well indeed. For Cyberpunk 2077, we used a built-in benchmark and a ray tracing low preset at a 1080p resolution. What we can see here is that the RTX 3050 averages 52 FPS with a minimum of 44. The RTX A1000 does 42 FPS average and 35 as the minimum. The max FPS are not quite relevant, but they are also a little bit apart at 61 and 54 respectively. Let's see how these cards fare in Starfield next. In Starfield we used the 1080p resolution and the low quality preset with DLSS set to quality. The RTX 3050 averaged 58 FPS and 47 FPS 41% lows and 14 FPS 40.1% lows. The RTX A1000 averaged 51 FPS, showed 1% lows of 36 FPS and 0.1% lows of 18 FPS. Panning around a city in City Skylines 2 with over 100,000 people proved very difficult for both cards. The average FPS looked fine with 32 and 39 respectively, but the 1% lows and 0.1% lows paint a very different picture indeed. It is very hitchy uh, at some points, 
But if you just let the game run its course for a little bit, usually uh, your frame rate goes back up again, and it is a playable experience. As, uh, the low preset was used, a very low preset indeed, and uh, some mix uh, settings at medium to make the game look a little bit more acceptable. And uh, this performance uh, was indeed very hitchy, but overall the game is playable, but it's proven very difficult for these cards to run. Like I've alluded to at the beginning of this video, Power Draw was somewhat of a mystery on especially the ZBook Power G10, because HP does not provide any details. The Lenovo should have a 65 watt TDP set, and the card, as you can see here in the chart, reported 72 watts used. The RTX A1000 is supposedly limited to about 45 watts, but it can peak up to 50 watts. Let's take a look at what this means for the clock speeds next. Looking at the GPU and memory clocks, we don't really see that much difference between the two, despite the deficit in wattage on the RTX A1000. We see that the RTX 3050 has a much higher boost clock, operating near 2 GHz, where the A1000 cannot really manage to come over 1700, and usually settles down around 1200 MHz in game. That's where the main deficit is really shown. Over time it is power limited so heavily that it will clock down uh, a lot, compared to what you see in this chart. So what does this mean for the temperatures? This should mean that the A1000 runs cooler, right? That story doesn't quite hold up as we can see in this GPU temperature chart. The RTX 3050 is capable of staying a little bit cooler than the A1000, and it is shown in the overall loudness of the systems respectively. The Lenovo Gaming 3 is quite a bit uh, quieter overall than the ZBook Power G10, and the main difference there is the CPU. That Raptor Lake i7 is really pulling almost 80 watts, where the Ryzen is much cooler at about 50 to 55 watts. So, yeah. So I guess it is now time for the conclusion of our battle of today. And here is the conclusion. I've averaged out all of the different results, and we can see that in superposition, the RTX 3050 is 13% head, this is continued in Port Royal and Starfield, and Cyberpunk and City Skylines are more than 20% uh, ahead of the RTX A1000. So we can see that the RTX 3050, despite having the same specifications on paper, that 20 watts of power makes a whole lot of difference. In this case, the 3050 is quite a bit faster than the RTX A1000. I hope you enjoyed this little comparison video, and uh, I thank you all for watching, and I'll see you guys in the next video.